This is a kind of a fun one. Let's take a few minutes to talk about black holes. Truth be told, we don't really know a lot about black holes or singularities. Not naming any names here, but there are actually some scientific institutions that have published videos describing them as gigantic vacuum cleaners in space, or big sucking blob monsters that absorb everything in sight. But that's not really scientifically accurate because it has no structure to it. What we do know about them is rather interesting. With our modern mathematics and physics, we understand that at the center of the black hole is a space with zero volume and yet infinite gravity. Infinite gravity, so powerful that light itself cannot escape its pull. Infinity. You know what that means, right? It means that the speed of light isn't the fastest thing in the universe as we have believed for so long. There's something faster, which has some relationship and connection to gravity. Whether faster than light is something specific to black holes or if they're found elsewhere in the universe, that's not yet officially scientifically known. But I'd reckon that at the heart of light itself, inside the photon of light in the nucleus of a subatomic particle, at a level so small that our technology cannot even see, that infinity is also present. So I wanna show you something interesting and also a little funny. Just flow with me on this. It's pretty funny if we can lighten up about ourselves. See, it appears as though pictures such as this have been used for years and years to try and describe the structure of space and black holes. Among all of these pictures, there's this common trait that I saw in all of the diagrams. Yes, the space is curving, but the space is curving from a point of flatness. Over and over, all over the world, space-time is often described as if it's this big flat plane out in space, and that the planets, the stars, the black holes just sort of create gravity around the fabric of space. And it just made me laugh. I mean, come on, this is a little funny. You know, first we had to fight our way to try and prove that the world wasn't flat, and it looks as though we're having to do the same thing with the universe. But don't worry, I'm pretty sure that most people would agree that space itself isn't flat. And I'm also pretty sure that these scientific institutions don't genuinely believe that space is flat. I hope. I understand that this is a technological trial of ours. We're not exactly sure what it looks like because it's probably like being underwater and there's waves constantly moving from all different sources, gravity from this star and that star and this galaxy and this black hole. It's a jumble, it's messy and we don't know how to visualize it. We don't even know which way is up. If there even is an up. For all we know, there isn't. Direction only happens in relationship to something else. And so even if our whole galaxy is a particle floating around in a great deep ocean on another planet in a super universe, unless we can actually demonstrate that scientifically, we're pretty much just throwing darts in the dark here. Now the original reason I brought this up was this whole flat universe model. We need to find a better way to describe space-time and the shape of black holes. And it's actually starting to happen. See, now pictures like this are starting to gain steam on the internet. These concepts seem to accurately demonstrate the toroidal flow of the cosmos and the patterns in geometry that are at the heart of the ways that reality is constructed. But why is this important to the world? Honestly, I think it helps people see how these same patterns are present everywhere, from whirlpools, galaxies, atoms, and even in our own bodies. We grow and build a sense of connection with everything around us. Now, I wanna present an idea with you. This is an idea that has sort of been mainstream-ish for a while but it never really got the big attention from scientific institutions or the media because we have a hard time seeing this to be demonstrated out in the universe. At the same time, that's how we evolve in science is we have to make predictions and then try and demonstrate and find examples of these things to see that they are in fact true or find the way in which it is true, how it does work. Just because this way isn't right doesn't mean that it can't work another way such as this. You know how black holes absorb light and matter and pretty much everything? That light obviously must go somewhere. The laws of a toroidal field dictate that what goes in must come out and what goes out must come back in. Now, the problem was that we've never really been able to follow or watch or see where energy and light goes once it goes into a black hole. We are blind once things pass the event horizon. All we know is that the laws of physics break down, infinity becomes reality and anything is possible. Some theories about this, as well as a beautiful demonstration by Neil deGrasse Tyson in episode four of The New Cosmos, discusses the idea of going through a black hole and coming out in another universe or a parallel dimension. In the case of black holes at the point of singularity, the fabric of space itself is said to break and all of the different universes become connected. We can also imagine that perhaps small black hole vacuums are what create stars. 
You know, stars form from collapsing clouds of space dust. And perhaps at the core of that fusing is that infinite space of fusion and infinity, the singularity. I know, I know. What does it have to do with you, right? Everything. It has everything to do with you. And we're going to get to that. We have a new episode planned for next week, so stay tuned. Oh, and if you haven't seen this yet, just, yeah. For me, I'm just in awe that there's so much about reality that we really don't know. The universe is so vast and so much greater than ourselves, and we're a part of that whole. We make it up, and without us, it would be incomplete. And that's pretty awesome. Hey there, I was just cleaning up some delicious popcorn. I got so excited while watching Nassim Haramine demonstrate that all particles at the smallest level we know of function like tiny Toroto fields with tiny singularities in each one. I got so excited that I threw popcorn everywhere. You see, it's so exciting because with that understanding, we actually begin to open up our understanding of what a singularity really is. We expand our ideas about it and our observation and awareness and thus our ability to affect it. We're used to dealing with a lot of density instead of what things really are, empty space. The world we live in is mostly empty space. It's really light and fluffy, like popcorn. <laughs> I know, it doesn't seem that way to our senses. And that's why sometimes when we talk about this stuff, it seems a little out there. The information doesn't seem dense enough, but what we think of as dense isn't even close to... The vacuum of space. A kindred spirit messaged me on the interwebs recently and asked me how come I thought the vacuum cleaner model of a black hole wasn't fitting. I responded very simply, where's the motor? Where's the cleaner bag? The filter? The power source? How does it work? I get the analogy. It's a vacuum cleaner because it sucks things up, right? Got it. So what about the center of the galaxy? which is not only absorbing light, but also radiating it. Is that like the light on the top or something? For that matter, why don't we use the analogy of a whirlpool or a hurricane instead of a vacuum cleaner? Especially since with the whirlpool, the surface of the water from above appears flat. And much like our diagrams with whirlpools and water, the energy going into the vortex is going somewhere. Where? a space of greater density. Because at the bottom of the whirlpool, it's all really heavy because there's the weight of the water compressing on top of it. I mean, isn't that the perfect model for the black hole? Why are we getting stuck on a vacuum cleaner? Nassim's work describes the structure of the vacuum, a sacred geometric prism, which is an incredible, if not perfect representation of the structure of reality. All of the elements, all of the atoms, and even the stars follow a basic set of principal patterns, which are mapped out like this. The idea is that the vacuum of space itself is dividing in very specific ways and relationships. The cube octahedron is one of the fundamental shapes which fractals out. Its opposite is the star tetrahedron, the inward and the outward flow of energy from the center. When we begin to look at the relationship between the data points in the vacuum, we see that they equate the phi ratio over and over and over. This is the pattern we come up with, which Nassim has called the 64 tetrahedron grid. Were you to put a sphere around every point, they would create a perfect three-dimensional flower of life. This is basically a three-dimensional Metatron's cube, a structure by which all known structures can be found. The pattern can continually fractal larger and smaller to create complex geometries and structures, such as molecules or organ systems in our bodies, which are made up based on the variety of different patterns all found within the shape. If this structure is the male component, then the female component would be the toroidal flow between and around all of the points. Imagine that every sphere in and of itself is a torus, each with a singularity of its own, but the larger fractal is a larger sphere, also with a singularity, of which all of the other toroids are connected to. You can see this geometry really clearly in the brain. You have the entire field, which is a network of interconnected data. Then you have the corpus callosum, which acts like an accretion disk of a galaxy. And then the pineal gland right in the center, which is the connector and the singularity for the entire network and field that is your brain. This structure also breaks down our construct of time because of the nature of the singularity. The singularity is the infinite vacuum, a space that may or may not be very strong, but has a relationship to all of the singularities around it, all of the empty space. 
By the fact that they are connected through their singularity, energy and information can pass through the center and translate to anywhere else on the grid if there's a passage to it. Much like the idea of folding a piece of paper to create a wormhole, when the singular connection is made between two points, now the entire distance can be traveled instantly. This is demonstrated scientifically when we see that subatomic particles can be in two places at the same time, or break the laws of physics when it comes to time and order, almost as if some particles are moving backwards in time. Seriously, time-traveling subatomic particles are real. Sources in the comments. So this is really, really cool. So cool, in fact, that I have to save the meat of it for another video dedicated entirely to the subject. But did you know that time slows down the closer you get to a singularity? In a singularity, time actually begins to converge on itself. Later becomes now, and now becomes later. But like I said, we'll get into that at a different time. Through the singularity, the two spaces, the very big and the very small, are completely interconnected. They're inside each other, might be another way to say it. Nassim even suggests that the entire egg in which our universe exists inside is actually a much larger black hole, a super massive black hole. How amazing is that? The singularity is the key to unlocking and understanding that. Looking at the geometry, we can see and begin to understand how it works. So let's take that idea and fractal it out a bit. You may or may not know about the I Ching, one of the oldest texts that we know of today. The text is said to describe the laws of nature through the union of polarities. It is a diagram consisting of 64 hexagrams, which represent vibrations of balance in between the yin and the yang, negative and positive energy. By taking those 64 hexagrams and putting them together, the collective number of the long lines and broken lines when you put them together can be constructed perfectly to create the 64 tetrahedron grid exactly. Not a single stone out of place. They fit together as if to say, yes, this is in fact the structure of the vacuum of space, the blueprints of the universe.